When it comes to push sticks, push blocks, and sanding blocks, there's a ton of different options out there. So today I wanna to cover why I use the ones I use, and most importantly, how I make them. So let's get started. Today we're gonna to be making a couple different variations of each of these, but we're only gonna be using a minimal amount of material, which is nice. Like a lot of you, I enjoy my creature comforts and making my own tools in the shop and making my own jigs are a big part of woodworking for me. So I think it's really cool to find what you like and make it. So let's get over to the table saw and dive more into these guys. All right, so the first push stick I wanna cover is my tried and true, which is this guy right here. I think it works really well. It gives me downward pressure and it allows my hand to stay above the workpiece. I have really great control with this type of push stick. And when it's exiting the blade, I can lift up on the handle and it actually pushes the workpiece through and out onto the outfeed table, which I think is super nice. You don't get that with every single type of push stick, but this one works really well for it. This other push stick here is a little dangerous in my opinion, because if you are working on a workpiece, it could easily lift up up and come right back and hit you in the face. And obviously that would suck. So I like to use this in combination with this push stick where I give it some sideways pressure against the fence and I can push my work piece through. That's honestly the number one use that I have for a push stick like this. There may be one or two cuts that come up every five projects that I need to use this push stick in a traditional sense. Again, I keep this over by the table saw because it's useful to give me that sideways pressure, but it's not my go-to for anything else. The next one I wanna talk about is our push block. Uh, push block's great for cutting dados. I'm gonna drop the blade here. Say we wanna cut a dado into our board here. Again, having these push blocks is really nice because you can easily push the board over the saw blade and you don't have to worry about your fingers get anywhere close to the blade. But I've also used some other designs over the years and I'd like to adapt mine to that. Last but not least, I'm gonna talk about these little guys here. I use these for smaller cuts when I know for a fact I'm going to destroy the bottom of my push stick. So these are really great for small cuts. Again, if I know that I'm gonna ruin the bottom of my push stick, then I choose not to and I use one of these disposable guys. For thinner cuts where I need to cut something like this, I make sure to use a feather board. And when I put the feather board in, it's really difficult to get a push stick like this over top of the feather board. So what I'll do is run my workpiece through and I'll use something like this where it's a quarter inch, but it's nice and tall, so it's over top of the blade, and I don't have to worry about my fingers, and it gives me a nice, easy push for a workpiece. So let's get over to the bench, and let's make a few of these. All right, so the first thing I needed to do was attach my printed template, and I'll do that using some spray adhesive. From there, I can trim off the extra and get over to the bandsaw. Now, even though I'm using a bandsaw to cut out this template, if you don't have a bandsaw, you could still make these using a jigsaw. Since this is a one-off template, I'm just gonna cut as close as I can to the line and we'll sand back to it here in a minute. For the base of the push stick, I like to use my fence and cut in a straight line. This way, everything stays nice and even. But you could also do this by hand because it doesn't need to be 100% accurate. Just try to get it as close as you can. All right, so with our template cut out, I could get over to sanding out those saw marks. Now this is where those sanding blocks come into play. And you can see that because these are flat blocks of MDF, they don't give very much. So the block is just inherently missing some of those lower parts on the piece. We're gonna resolve that later on when we get to the new updated sandy blocks. But I do like the size of these sanding blocks because they're easy to hold on to and they fit into tight areas nice and easily. So yeah, now the template's done and you could do all the templates this way. In the interest of saving time, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the remaining templates out over at my CNC just so that I can make these blocks again and again and I don't have to repeat this process. So while you could make these one at a time like I did the first one, I recommend templating them out out of MDF so that you can reuse the templates. And if you wanna make all these push blocks and push sticks for yourself, I'll have a link down in the description where you can download the templates for free. And for those of you with a CNC, I'll include the CNC files in there as well. So since we already made the half inch version of this one, I just went ahead and cut out the quarter inch one over at the CNC so we don't have to make it again. So from there, I took my scrap walnut over to the planer and thickness it down to about three quarters of an inch. And I like using scrap because those people who think that money doesn't grow on trees clearly haven't purchased any lumber lately. So from there, I could start laying out my templates onto the stock. And here I'm just shooting for some nice grain pattern and I'm avoiding any checks and cracks that you see in this scrap board. And again, for the body of our hero push stick, I'll be using birch plywood. This helps me avoid any breaking that might occur from a short grain to long grain transition. From there, it's back over to the bandsaw to rough cut our pieces. And this time I have the proper blade installed so we can cut around those curves easily. Now for the push sticks, I'm gonna be template routing those out over at the router table, so we wanna get as close to the line as possible. I'd recommend leaving no more than an eighth of an inch. And hey, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It allows the video to reach new people and really helps me out. Thanks for your support. So when it comes to these tighter curves, I just like to put a couple of relief cuts in and then come back and slice them off. It puts less stress on the blade and makes the cuts a lot easier. So with those templates rough cut, next up was the sanding blocks. So I took my board over to the table saw and cut out a few strips. This will be for the width of those blocks and we want those to be consistent. 
From there, I took the strips back over the bandsaw to cut out our blocks. Now these curves are gonna be slightly smaller than the diameter of the circle of my sandpaper. And this is so the adhesive back sandpaper overlaps the edge a little bit and gives me a really nice curve. Cutting the curves like this also helps me maximize surface area, meaning less of that sandpaper is gonna to go to waste. So now that all my templates have been rough cut, I can go ahead and set up the router table. And to template route these out, I'll be using my compression flush trim bit. So with my bit all set up, I went ahead and attached my templates using some double stick tape. Now I like using enough double stick tape to make sure the template doesn't move, but not so much that I can't pop the template off. Plus this stuff's kind of expensive. Now I've used this bit a lot on the channel and I always get questions about it. So I'll leave a link down in the description to it if you guys want to check it out. I really like using this bit because I get very little tear out from it and it gives me a buttery smooth finish. But like with any routing procedure, just take your time and of course, use a push block because we don't want to lose our digits like Luke at the end of Empire Strikes Back. That's impossible. Next, I took my pieces over to my belt sander and disc sander to clean up the edges. This allows me to ease that curve of my push block handle. I didn't flush trim this over at the router table because there's a lot of grain moving in different directions and I didn't want to get tear out. And then for the sanding blocks, I just ease that top rounded edge on each side so that I have a nice comfortable place to rest my palm and my fingers. Now this isn't so much an exact science as it is a feel thing, so just do what feels comfortable. And speaking of comfortable, the next step was to round over all those edges that are going to come in contact with my hands. So here I'm just using a quarter inch round over bit to round over those edges. Now I've shown a bunch of different techniques and videos about rounding over edges, but I want to know what you guys think. What's your favorite way to round over edges? Let me know down in the comments. And I want you to know that I value each of your opinions, even when you're wrong. So whether you're using a palm router or a router table like I am, all we're looking for here is a nice smooth round over. Just make sure to avoid the bottoms because we really want that flat surface area so that we maximize our contact with the workpiece. So with the roundovers done, I could cut out the base for our push block and our push stick. I do this over at the table saw so that I ensure I have nice square pieces. Our push block's gonna have a plywood base so that we can avoid any wood movement and bowing, but our push stick's gonna have a walnut one because as you guys know, I do love me some walnut. But again, these bases are replaceable, so use what you got. From there, I just use my table saw sled to make sure there was a nice clean edge on the bottom of my push stick. And with the push stick frame all done, I could focus on that base. And to notch out the bottom of the base, I'm just gonna use my bandsaw because it's a lot faster than trying to line it up with the table saw. But a table saw would work as well, just make sure to stop the cut before you get all the way through, and then just finish the cut with a hand saw or jigsaw. I like to leave a 3 of an inch deep notch at the back, so I can easily cut half inch thick pieces at the table saw without it rubbing against the tabletop. And then back over the table saw, I swapped out my crosscut blade for my dado stack. And hey, swap out that unsubscribed status for a subscribed one. I put out new videos all the time, and you don't wanna miss the next one. And as always, thank you for your support. All right, so with my three quarter inch dado stack installed, I went ahead and cut the dado into the center of my push block base. And if you don't have a dado stack, you can just take multiple passes at the table saw until you get the groove to the proper width. From there, it was back over to the router table to round over all the top edges. Once I had all the edges rounded over on all my pieces, I went ahead and filled any knots with some CA glue and then sanded them down. For the handle on the push block, I wanted to give a little finger indention, so I used the edge of my random orbit sander to sand in a small impression. This is just going to make the finger hold on the handle a little more comfortable. And I make sure to wear a mask when I'm doing this because the shop looks like Dune when I'm done. But now I got this awesome handle, so worth it. So next up I could attach the base to my push stick and push block. And to do that I'm just going to use a combination of CA glue and some quick and thick. The CA glue alongside blue tape will act as clamps, and the quick and thick dries really quickly so I don't have to wait around in the shop. And because I'm attaching this as a separate section, if I ever need to replace it, I can just rip the bottom off over at the table saw and then attach a new base. So once I had three ships of tape holding everything together, I could turn my attention over to the push block. And the push block comes together in a similar fashion, only this time I omit the CA glue. There should be enough pressure from just pushing down on the top to hold everything in place. So earlier I talked about adding a little give to the bottom of my sanding blocks. And to do that, I'm going to use some of this adhesive backed craft foam. What this is going to do is allow the bottom of the sanding block to really contour to the workpiece. And attaching it is just a matter of sticking it on and trimming off the excess. Now this of course is an optional step, but I really think it makes a world of difference. And then from there I added my mark to all the pieces. This is just a nice little touch and makes these feel like part of the shop. And hey, if you want to feel like you're part of the shop, I invite you to join my Patreon, where you'll get discount codes on project plans and merch, plus an invite to the Discord server and some other cool stuff. So check out the link below. And for those of you who have already joined, thank you so much for your support. From there it was on to the finish. And for the finish I'm just using what I have in the shop, and that's some of this penetrating oil but I recommend you using any finish that you like to use. And this is also an opportunity to try something new. So don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone and try something you haven't before. And if it doesn't quite work out, just know that every catastrophe is an opportunity. All right, so I let everything cure up overnight and I want to apply some rubberized cork to the bottom of our push block and our sheets of sandpaper to our sanding blocks. And then we'll see how these guys perform. So let's get this knocked out. All right, so this rubberized cork is gonna give some nice grab onto the bottom of my push block. And I apply it the same way as I did the foam earlier. I stick it on and then outline the piece with a razor blade. 
and this stuff has a lot more tact than just regular cork, so it's perfect for this application. I'll link to it in the description. From there I could attach my adhesive back sandpaper. And the best way that I found to attach these is to stick them on the bottom and then roll the sandpaper over the edge of the blocks so that it stays in place. And since I made five of these sanding blocks, I have one for each grit going up to 220. So with everything complete, I could finally test it out. And I gotta tell you that that softened foam base really made quick work of the burn marks in this hard maple. And I also feel like there's a lot more feedback from the sanding block itself. The push block has a really nice comfortable contour to my hand and has plenty of grip to safely cut dados. Not to mention I think it looks spectacular. As for my permanent push sticks, they both feel and work fantastically and definitely live up to the expectation. My thinner, less permanent versions turned out great as well, and they work as expected, which is all I can really ask for. All right, guys, I think these things turned out fantastic, and they're a huge upgrade from my previous versions. The sanding blocks, the push sticks, the push blocks, they're all great additions to the shop. And again, if you want to make your own, check out the link down in the description. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Check out this one over here next, and I'll see you next time.